Helm Cell 2019 looks to be special in many ways. How? Well, first of all, we're getting a special match between Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. Will Bray Wyatt finally get that moment? Or we will get WWE being WWE. Oh my, it's The Undertaker! Ah! The Undertaker with a choke slam, Nigel! We're getting Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker at Crown Jewel, Nigel! Yeah, I would prefer for that not to happen, but you never know. It's also special because we only have four matches confirmed. What? What? Huh? Where is my 60 hour WWE experience? Oh, look at that guy, the great one. He's so negative, dude. Why are you always complaining, bruh? And that's another thing I want to talk about. You guys know that I didn't really like the ending of SmackDown. I feel like Kofi Kingston losing in 9 seconds after having a championship for 6 months is ridiculous. An injured Seth Rollins beating the crap out of Brock Lesnar. And this guy comes out and it's for the championship and this rivalry doesn't really need a championship. Fair enough, right? I didn't like it. What's the big deal? No. It is a big deal. Well, it's a big deal to the WWE community. Why are you always complaining, bruh? And I really don't get it because I'm just trying to be honest. Especially this week, I didn't really say a lot of negative stuff about WWE or wrestling in general. I thought that this was the greatest NXT episode I've ever seen. AEW was the show of the week and I gave it 9 out of 10. Raw was different and got people talking. But oh my people, I did not like SmackDown that much. So I'm just always complaining, bruh. I'm negative. Why I'm always negative? What satisfies me? This is the kind of crap I have to read on Twitter. I know you guys understand. I'm just trying to keep it real. If I like something, I like something. If I don't like something, I'm not gonna try to convince myself and my audience that you should like it and I should like it because, well, maybe, maybe there's something good in it. Maybe I was a bit too negative about SmackDown, but then again, people, how could I not? Looking back, it's probably unintentional, but right now, Kofi Kingston is a bigger babyface than ever. It's kinda interesting, and at this point, I feel like he should move to Monday Night Raw and even face for the Universal Championship. Like, it kinda built Kofi. I don't know if, if it was intentional by the WWE, but like I've said, he's the biggest babyface right now, even bigger than he was before. So at the end of the day, we might get a positive, but again, it's probably unintentional. So let's talk about Hell in a Cell. People, the build was not the best, and I do understand it because we got these premieres, they didn't really focus on the rivalries that much. So maybe that's the reason why we only have four matches. These four matches had rivalries, pretty decent in my opinion, not the worst, but am I excited about these matches? Not necessarily. I think the only interesting match to me, the only match I really cannot wait for is Bray Wyatt versus uh, Seth Rollins and this is a match that I'm just seriously cannot wait for. I want to see how they are going to handle that because I'm pretty sure they're not giving the championship to Bray Wyatt but how are they going to come up with an excuse to be like uh, Bray Wyatt lost but here's why you should care. So before we start with our WWE Hell in a Cell 2019 predictions I want to thank our sponsors. The Ultimate Farmer's Milk. All natural, no BS. Straight out of my farm. It's so good you will not share it with your buddy. And people, I'm telling you, it's so good. Like, I don't even drink water anymore. Straight out of my farm. I think I'll stop eating food. Anyway, let's start with our WWE Hell in a Cell 2019 predictions. SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey vs. Charlotte. Flair. This was announced on social media, yes I know, and it's kinda ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. Like, why couldn't you just announce it on Raw, SmackDown, or anywhere else? Uh, we didn't get anything that special during this week, so... I don't know, we, we still got these matches, why couldn't they just... Anyway, that's typical WWE. The rivalry is not that interesting to me, the only thing I wanna see, I care about, is... I mean, if Charlotte Flair is going to win the SmackDown Championship, we will know that she's going to be on SmackDown. That's the way I think. But if Bayley retains, we will know that she is going to be on SmackDown. We cannot have all four horsewomen on SmackDown. It doesn't make any sense, and we won't because all of them are in championship matches. What do you know? That's the only women WWE care about. And Nia Jax, but they should probably stop. Anyway... My prediction is going to be... Uh, I'm gonna say Bailey. I don't know why, but I just have this feeling that Bailey is retaining 
ever since you know she turned heel it feels like wwe want to do something special with her not quite sure what it's going to be haven't seen it yet uh, yeah but my prediction is going to be Bailey. Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. This is a strange storyline that many of you probably don't even like. I gotta be honest, they've put a lot of effort into this. Like, as weird as it is, it's kind of unpredictable. We all thought that Daniel Bryan is the one who attacked Roman Reigns. And you see, people, at the end of the day, I still think that Daniel Bryan is behind this. I'm pretty sure at this match, at Hell in a Cell, we are going to find out that Daniel Bryan actually told Luke Harper and Eric Rowans to attack Roman Reigns and even Daniel Bryan himself. How do you prove that you are not behind this? Well, have your buddies attacking you so you fool the entire audience and even Roman Reigns. So, I'm not sure about it, uh, probably. But at the end of the day, is Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan versus Luke uh, Harper and Eric Rowan a dream match? You know, your conclusion to the storyline? Probably not. I'm pretty sure this is building towards Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan, a match that many of us would love to see. Do I want to see Daniel Bryan as a heel again? Not necessarily. You know, he's the greatest heel of 2019-18. But at this point, you know, SmackDown moving to Fox, Raw being separate from SmackDown, we need a big baby face. And Daniel Bryan is exactly that. So I would not turn him heel again, but my prediction is going to be Eric Rowan and Luke Harper because Daniel Bryan is actually going to help them and screw Roman Reigns. Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks. Hell in a Cell match. Two Hell in a Cell matches this year. Again, this is a match that I care about because of the draft. Becky Lynch is the face of women's division. She's being advertised in every SmackDown on Fox advertisement. So, I'm pretty sure she is going to SmackDown. I'm pretty sure Roman Reigns is going to SmackDown, Lesnar is going to SmackDown, Becky is going to SmackDown. It's the A show. WWE meets celebrities. Nicki Minaj on SmackDown. Nigel, it's Nicki Minaj on SmackDown. Ah, it's Kim Kardashian. Anyway, that's your SmackDown in 2019. I'm pretty sure Sasha Banks is winning the championship just so Becky Lynch could move to SmackDown. I don't want to see a Raw Women's Champion on SmackDown Live. Just keep every storyline, every championship separate from Raw and SmackDown. And that is going to be my prediction. I'm pretty sure the match is going to be good. It's going to be very long and maybe that's the reason. You know, maybe that's the reason why we have so few matches on this show. Maybe some Hell in a Cell matches, either this one or the main event, is going to be very long. Maybe it's going to be like a 30-40 minute match and they were like, why don't we just give a match that we, people care about like Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins or Sasha Banks versus Be Becky Lynch, why don't we just give it more time instead of putting the, all of these random matches on the card? And if, and if that's the case, I think it's a great idea. Anyway, my prediction is Sasha Banks, just so Becky could go to smack it down. Let's talk about the main event, possibly, hopefully, Bray Wyatt, uh, The Fiend, versus Seth Rollins. Imagine if Bray Wyatt shows up in his normal look. That would be weird. Wouldn't be surprised, though, because maybe that's why he lost to Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell. And like I've said, I'm pretty sure Seth Rollins is going to win the match. That is going to be my prediction. But he, sh he should not. He should not. Bray Wyatt has been always screwed. He looks like a tough guy. He talks all the smack. He looks strong during the rivalry. At the end of the day, he always loses the match. And it never worked. Look at Braun Strowman. Uh, seven or six title matches in a row lost. Do people care about him anymore? Not really. And that's exactly what is going to happen. Bray Wyatt is going to lose and or you know let's talk about that a little bit later but Bray Wyatt is not gonna be the champion and then he's gonna be even tougher than he was before and he's going to attack the whole roster I don't care he lost the match I really don't care at this point it, it, it tells me that you don't care about the guy you don't trust him enough to give him the championship and yeah that's just my opinion on it but I don't think we're gonna get a fair finish Someone is going to interfere, something is going to happen, 
and it's basically going to set up a different match at Crown Jewel. People are talking about it, and I actually think that this is exactly what we are going to get. Undertaker or someone is going to attack Bray Wyatt, it's going to end in no contest, or Seth Rollins is going to win, but, you know, it's going to be not fair. Uh, either way, to keep it simple, Rollins wins the match. Most importantly, Bray Wyatt is not gonna be the champion, unfortunately. So these are my predictions for Hell in a Cell 2019 pay-per-view. Looks to be like a decent one in a way, kinda-ish, I guess. Not necessarily anything groundbreaking, but this, the only match, like Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins is just... That sells the whole paper, in my opinion. That's why they didn't bother, probably. So, thank you for watching. Let me know your predictions in the comments below. Do you think that Bray Wyatt should win the championship? Or do you think that, like, he doesn't need the championship? Uh, thanks for watching The Great One. Peace, love, and hugs.